Hey everybody, this is Alessandro, welcome to my channel. And today's tutorial is about having extra level of polish in your spine and neck and head area, okay guys? As you can see guys here, I have a very simple movement, what actually is the head leaning the movement, and we have a reverse shape in the spine. It's very simple. I tend to exaggerate a little bit more because if you guys follow my tutorial, you realize that sometimes when I want to explain a concept, uh, I rather exaggerate a little bit what I'm explaining so you can understand better the concept and eventually reapply in every different scenario, okay? So one of the things that I struggle the most usually when I start to do animation is that even I have like a nice spine movement and everything, when it comes to polish, it, sometimes it's, there are still some parts when it looks kind of stiff. So for example, if you take a look at this ending part here, the the spine is kind of stiff, the relationship in, in space between the head, the neck, the shoulder, and the hip is kind of the same. So I want to show you how to break it up those things, um, how to overlap all different axes in the spine and the hip and the head area, and really put the level of polish that you can have in feature quality. Before I start my tutorial, something I want to explain. When I usually I, I focus on polish, and I usually focus on, on certain parts of the body, like only the spine or only the head, I have this kind of hierarchy approach, which means I start, for example, from overlapping those three controllers. That's the first things I do. Then I clean the arc of the hip and the upper chest and the head. Uh, I start to offset, for example, all the three different axes. So I'm going to make sure that the rotation of the spine, it doesn't happen all at the same time. I, I will add extra movement on the hip, for example. Uh, I will have some squash and stretch here and here to make it look, look more... Uh, uh, more organic and at the very end I will use this controller here to create extra movement to make sure the the spine doesn't look too stiff okay once you bring all those elements together I'm telling you guys the quality of the animation is, is gonna be really nice as I just mentioned the first thing I want to do guys is offsetting different controller between the spine and the neck and the head area so they're not gonna move like all together one of the mixed conception is that since because this is the root, it's always going to be the root moving first and then the upper controller later and then again later on. But in this case, as you can see, I'm leaning with the head. Okay, so what I'm going to do, for at least for the first part here, for the first three frames, actually anticipate by one frame the head movement. Okay, and then here actually uh, postpone it by one frame. And same things here with these two controllers. I actually want to anticipate, you know, I kind of want to have the upper spine moving earlier because it's the head leaning, remember guys. Okay, and then here, because it's kind of settling down, I want to offset and overlap, you know, the two controllers. And even the last one, I'm gonna shift one more frame. Okay, so if we take a look, guys, it already look a tiny bit better. So now I'm gonna focus on the arc. Okay, just adjust it a tiny bit. Okay, make sure it looks nice. the same things with the upper chest okay here we start to go down I think maybe here I can push the down down part even more and then here maybe Okay, I want to have a nice arc in here. Okay. Okay, it's already starting to look much better. 
And now it's time to adjust and offset all the different axes, you know, the X, the Y, and the Z. I'm gonna start with the head since the character is leaning, and for now I'm gonna focus only on the X axis, okay? Okay, I wanna make sure the extreme it's for neck and head at the same time. Here maybe I wanna adjust a little bit more the easy in. So see that's the part I was talking about where actually the neck, you see the rotation looks all stiff. So I'm gonna adjust it a little bit and then overshoot this direction. Here I want to have a bit more of compression. And then kind of offset. Okay, I need a little bit of movement. If we take a look at the nose, now there is a little bit of saddle here at the very end, in this part here, so it doesn't look stuck anymore. Now we're gonna focus on the upper spine instead, um, always on the on the X axis. It's a little bit more here. Same things here, I think we can exaggerate a little bit more the overlap and then kind of settle it down a bit more, okay? So it doesn't come to a complete uh, stop. And even if you take a look at the spine now, there is a very nice subtle movement right now at the end, okay? And this was about only about the X axis, okay? Right now I'm gonna focus on the other axis as well, for example, the Y axis. Uh, what I wanna do now, I wanna actually have the head turning a little bit more this direction, almost kind of anticipating the, the head movement to the other side. Okay. Again here. Okay. So we can overshoot a bit more to the left side and then kind of bounce him back. Okay. But I think here it should be already more like this. Okay. Maybe I can exaggerate a bit more. And now again, you can see towards the end, it's kind of going the nose a little bit more to the left side and then bouncing back to the right. And now again we're going to do again with the upper chest, but this time we can actually use this IK controller. Okay, so we can twist this direction here. Okay, I keep anticipating here. So you can actually adjust now the key accordingly. Again, shift it this. Okay. If you just take a look at the at the twist of the torso, now as you can see there is a lot of nice change and it doesn't look as static as before. And we can exaggerate it a bit more here at the very end. Okay. And now we're gonna do the same for the Z axis. So because of the head is leaning, we can start to twist it a bit more in this direction. Okay. Actually, we can just remove those two keys. And here. 
here we can offset and now again we can overshoot in here and reduce it maybe here actually I can still exaggerate a bit more like adjusting the is it in here so you can you will feel more the change in the spine in this angle of the shoulder you can kind of slightly adjust doesn't need a lot to adjustment in the head but just a tiny bit and I think on this one the overshoot doesn't look that nice so maybe you can just have an easy in okay so now we start to have a really nice and good movement okay you can feel that everything is not moving at the same time now that we adjust the head and the spine rotation we're gonna move to the hip the things that I want to do is like during the compression I want to increase the the line of action here so I'm rotating the hip on the on the left side maybe at the beginning I can exaggerate a bit more on the opposite side okay here and again here we can adjust the y-axis okay I can adjust the rotation on X as well, okay? So now if you take a look, there is also nice movement in the hip, it doesn't look too stuck. So now here it's time to uh, adjust even more the squash stretch, okay? Of course, when we do this, we also have to take care of the arc, make sure it's still clean. Now we're going to do the same with the head. Press it here and then here, stretch it. Compress a bit more here. You can also push a bit more here. Rotation on the IK. So this stage is just about fine tuning and as I mentioned in the beginning guys I'm exaggerating a lot just to let you understand exactly what is going on. Another thing you want to be careful about is, is the neck. You see how kind of stiff and rigid it is, all this part here. So you might drag it a little bit more, okay. Okay. I wanted to overshoot a little bit more the rotation axis here. The X one. Now, the last touch I want to give, and 
the, at the very end is using this controller to control the shape in the middle okay for example here you see like here is moving a little bit but it, there is no change okay so I want to just do this and here pushing a bit more back like this and here so say I want to do this and push a bit forward and then go back So see now you can start to feel a, a little bit of movement, extra movement in the middle of the spine, okay? So okay, let's take a look so what you have so far with the play blast. I think you guys could see the drastic difference between our animation right here and the old one that we have at the beginning. We put a lot of details and effort into the spine, the neck area, the head and everything, the hip as well. So, you know, we really tweak every single axis. Okay, guys, one more time. As I repeat through the whole tutorial, I exaggerate a lot because I want you to show you clearly what I'm doing. But it's up to you based on your animation, your style, how much you want to exaggerate or you want to tone it down. And another thing you want to keep in consideration is, so if your character is really far away from camera, you might want to exaggerate and push those squash and stretch, all those overshooting and overlapping as well, okay? Because they will look really nice. But if you are animating a close-up, then of course you don't need to exaggerate it that much because then you will have a really lot of weird movement that it's going to be kind of distracting. So it's up to you how you want to push it, depends if it's cartoony or how close the character is on camera. Last few things I want to mention is the first one is this one. Always remember also to track the arc in the nose, okay? It's very important, especially when you're having a movement like this, that everything is really clean. And the last one is this one. Basically, sometimes it's difficult for you guys to track, rotation, translation, the arc of every different part of the body. You can basically create those sphere and attach them to the hip, the upper spine and the head and kind of move them together. So now you can actually see how the rotation of different objects and translation, they're kind of set and they're, they actually behave differently. So guys, imagine if you're doing the same principle that I show you today here, not just for the spine and the head, but for the entire body. You do the same for the shoulder, for the arms, for the hands, face expression, the feet and everything. If you're gonna do all this correctly, guys, I'm telling you, you're gonna push the quality of your animation to a next level, guys. And I know you might think, guys, it's gonna take a lot of time, and this is actually true, but I'd rather spend more time and, and do only 10 seconds of animation that looks really outstanding, Instead of like animating faster and then doing animation, it's not as good. So hope you guys enjoy and see you next time.